Hey guys, so um, I decided I'd pull out some Christmas fabric. <laughs> What's going on up here? And um, try to do the, what come in the box today because I just think this is super cute and I want to try it. So I pulled out some Christmas fabric that I already have. to maybe use as the sashing that goes in between. Um, I've got some of this and I'm gonna audition them and see um, which one I like the best to make this quilt. I've got some of this. So I thought, well, let's try to use it. I got some of this. I don't know if there's enough of that I have some of this and <laughs> I have some of this. This is my crazy quilting room and the cat is up. Get down, George. Get down, Georgie. So, this is what we're making. This is what we got in the box today. This is real life, people. Real life. I got a hot mess. Okay. So, on the backing, I need three quarter yards. Three quarter yards. Okay. So, on the background, we need two strips of fabric from the three four yard. Okay. Two strips of fabric. We're gonna have to iron this too. I'm gonna use this as the background. I think it's got gold in it. And that should do it. If not, I will get some more. This is Pin Drop by Riley Brutt Blake by Christopher Thompson. It must have been on sale. I usually, if I, if I see a background and they're on sale, I usually try to buy it. Okay. Rulers that you have that you feel like slips. I have this um, film that I bought. Well, I thought it was on the back of that, but it's not. I have a film that I bought that you just put the film on and it's better than you can see that it's better than um those little dots that you put on there because it's flat so i really like those so right now i'm just cutting my background squares how many ever it told me that i needed in the pattern which obviously is going to be not let's see now I've got to cut my fusible strips. I'm not going to cut them uh, fusible strips. I'm not going to follow that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Missouri Star So Light Interfacing. I wonder if that comes off. Yeah, it comes off. And I'm just going to cut out my uh, nine little, I'm going to just get a pencil. You don't want to do a, um, you, you don't want to do a friction pin with this because it will, when you, if you aren't, when, once you iron it, it's going to iron off. And this is pretty grippy. It's not seeming to slide too much because it's got the background on it. So I'm going to just uh, go around with a pen. Nobody's going to see it. Hopefully my trace tracing isn't well, too bad. I think if you just get the gist of what you're trying to make, that's going to be 
the important part. I believe they have these templates on sale on the Missouri Star website. And you can I'll put the um, website down below. I don't know if you can click on it because for some reason they're not allowing me to do links quite yet. But they have, I don't think you can get this specific, maybe it's a special edition one, it's pink. But I know they have yellow ones with Christmas trees and stockings. And you can check out their templates down below if you didn't get the box and you want to do this. I'm not sure if they have this one, but they have stockings and trees and I think there was snowflakes. My sweaters are gonna be ugly because uh, my drawing is awesome. <laughs> yep, my drawing is awesome. So, how many of you guys got the box and are just watching people, or are you just watching people open the box? I used to like to watch, I like to watch unboxings. Of uh, quilty stuff, not really, not really anything else. Okay, okay, so now that I have my, all my sweaters are traced, and they're not traced awesome, not at all, traced on the paper, let's see what it says to do. Okay, now that I have my, um, y'all excuse that, now that I have my sweaters traced on my Usable. I'm just going to cut these out. I'm using little scissors. Um, I'm using the little scissors so that it might be easier to go around the applique uh, with a pair of little scissors rather than trying to use big scissors to cut around the little spots. And these are pretty sharp. I think I got them at Fat Quarter Shop or they come in a box. I'm not sure if they come in a box, but they're, I mean, they're pretty sharp. So we're just gonna cut around here. I'm gonna go a little faster. And you can save these things right here um, because if you have something little that you need to applique down, you can always just use a little strip. So don't throw these away. I use these little scraps all the time. Oh yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Okay. Now I have all my shapes cut out. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so all my shapes are cut out. Now, the fun part, fun, 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 is I get to pick nine fabrics that I want. I know I want this one. I know I want this one. I know I want this one with the cats, which I thought was whales because it was sideways. <laughs> um, we'll see. I know I want this one with the cookies cut in all different shapes. Two, three, four. I want this one, five. Six. 
six. Seven, eight, and so hmm, I'm gonna look at the pattern and see which one is cute. Oh, now see, this is super cute because if you can see, they put fringes on this sweater they put rick rack on this sweater so they've got really cute um embellishments i think i'm gonna go with the duck check the duck wins okay so now i have picked my nine prints that i want okay so we're going to put these, I'm going to use my, thing right here. And we're going to put the fusible on the back of this. Doesn't matter how, unless you, I mean, you want to, um, if it goes in a certain shape or direction that you want the top of your sweater to go on, pay attention to that. If it doesn't matter to you because it's supposed to be an ugly sweater, then there you go. Let me see. Uh, my reindeers would have been upside down. I don't want my reindeers upside down. My check the ducks are going every which way, so I don't think that matters. Just make sure that your fusible is not going over your fabric. Make sure you cut it enough to be within the square. You can almost just pick your fabric up and put that up against it and you can see if you want to turn your fabric a different way, if you don't like that one. Um, maybe more of them's going this way and you want it to go that way. You can see through that, or you can take your template and see where you want it positioned. See, like some of these chucks are going all cattywampus, and I want one to at least be going up. So I think I like it there. But then I gotta watch my feasible not to go over. So let's see. These are all pretty okay. Oh no, oh no, look what I did. I ruined it. I put it upside down on the wrong one. And I don't know if I have another one left. Well, hey, it's rubbing off. So, I think I can still use it on the right side. Yeah. Let's see if I have another one. Okay, I do have another one. Save the day. So, um... What I'm going to do is because I don't think this is going to stick now. I'm going to help it out. And if you don't want to buy this, if you don't want to buy this fusible, you can always buy applique glue, anything like that. Um, instead of the, I might just, oh Lord, I might help it out a little bit. Some of this stuff I don't like. Um, it leaves residue but I'm gonna try this one just to help it out a little bit that's probably too much 
probably is, but. Ah. That's what happens when you're just doing something. Sometimes stuff happens. But if we can get this to stick, it's not gonna matter. So all we're looking for is this to stick on here. Just long enough, uh, just long enough to, see that? I put too much glue on it. Apparently I'm not supposed to have, have check the duck. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Now we'll see if I did this right. Okay, I got my little scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and get the majority of this cut off so I'm not cutting all night. I'm getting as close as I can just to get the to what I need and now I can cut out the good stuff and a little scissor that's really sharp helps out so much when you're trimming in these little spots because you can literally just take it like this and cut really close because it's so sharp. And I don't think these scissors was that much. Or either I got them in a box. I mean, and if you're going with the theme of fugly, snuggly, ugly, fugly, <laughs> snuggly. I don't think it's going to matter if it's perfect. But we want them to be cute too. See, this is where the little scissors come in because you can go right up in there and cut and get that. Just like that. And I'm going to move that over just a tad. Yeah, I'll pull it over because it's already been cut. So I can get this and it's not in the way. One little sweater. And another thing that you don't have to be perfect with these is if you're going to zigzag stitch or you're going to um, blanket stitch, you know, it doesn't have to be super perfect because that stitch is gonna cover the majority of the outline. Number two. Getting faster. So now I've changed up my strategy and I'm using my rotary cutter on the parts that are straight. And then trim it up with the little scissors on the little bitty detail parts. And that's helping out, making it super faster. Super girl. And you just Take your rotary cutter and go where you're comfortable going and go really slow, just on the parts you're comfortable, and then come back in with the little scissors and get the details. And then I'm just, on this arm, I'm moving it out of the way so I can get right here. See, I'm moving it because you have this arm right here. So I'm just cutting up, up there on the sweater side on the sweater side and then i'm just moving the sweater out of the way so that i can get the extra little bit without it being in the way so 
see any clouds. Gingerbread man. Christmas light. Sugar cookies. Well, I could do a one arm sweater. <laughs> that would be super fugly. Snuggly fugly. That is my donuts. Oh, that come out good. This is all I'm doing with the um, rotary cutter. And see up here and right here, I'm using the scissors and on the edges to trim around the delicate parts. That just saves so much time. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you do whatever you feel comfortable doing. If you want to sit here and cut this stuff out while you're listening to a podcast, like while you're listening to Joe Rogan, or Theo Vaughn, <laughs> if you want to just sit here and cut this out while you're watching their podcast, then by all means, or crime, true crime, whatever you want to do ever makes you happy i don't want to do this all night last one okay this was applique glue is this showing up applique glue let's see Jill Lily Studios Mini Applique Glue. Just don't have to use a lot because I used, actually, I used too much. Okay. Now we're going to get our background squares. Dollar Tree. It's a flower pot. Okay, we're gonna get our background squares and we're gonna peel off the back. Maybe, maybe we'll peel off the back. Maybe we won't. There we go. Okay, peel off your back. And then it's going to be like this. It's going to be sticky. See how they shine? That's the glue. You're going to lay them on your... Thing right here. I'm not going to do all that folding and doing all that. I'm going to just eye it. It's supposed to be an ugly sweater. I'm not worried about it. And then we're just going to put it on there. And there you go. One and done. Maybe the session will work it out. I thought that gold on there might make it look cute. And it might. Sometimes when I'm doing stuff, I don't like it when I'm doing it, but then it turns out okay. Don't mess the, just press. Don't move it around a lot, just press. I usually like count to three. And it looks like I'm sliding it, but I'm lift, I'm kind of lifting it up. I'm not actually sliding it on there. Well, 
you have to take it doesn't work if you don't take off the back now I hope I didn't mess this up <laughs> I probably just I don't know hopefully like I said you watch my channel to learn what not to do don't iron it on there until your backing is off good night does anybody else like me does anybody else have these first world country problems okay okay if you don't do it right the first time it still comes out okay so don't worry about it lord if i worry about every little thing i did wrong i would just give up i would give up poppy is asleep it is past her bedtime If you're like me and you can't just pull it off get your scissors or make you a small light cut just take it and make a small light cut in it at the end and it'll pull off now we have all our little blocks now we have to cut our accent fabric this right here is one of my favorite tools. It is a Shape Cut Plus June Taylor Shape Cut Plus. They have a stripology ruler, but it, y'all know I'm cheap, so this was cheaper and it's just as good. So, um, this is the one I got. Now, my issue is what fabric is gonna look best in my what fabric's gonna look best in my blocks let's see so I'm gonna have to audition some fabric once I get my blocks how I want them no. Okay, let's see if that's what I like. Okay, I like that. We like this. Now, I got to see what fabric I want for my sashing. again do I like this this looks good I like this let me try one more green red or green I think that I like the green better I'm not in love with the red so it's gonna be green the trick to this is it's making sure you're all your pleats and stuff is out of it if you have any in there it's gonna mess it up and I have some in here I can feel it see that that's not good 
You don't want that in there when you're cutting. You definitely don't want that in there when you're cutting. So I'm gonna have to take a break and I'm gonna have to iron this. I'm glad I opened that up and ironed it because it was really, really bad. Really bad. And it still didn't come all the way out, but I'm okay with that. It's way better than what it was. So right now I'm just folding it over to place it under my thing. And I have to see what my measurements are. Okay. So I'm going to lay this on top of here. This might be too... might be too much okay I had it folded one too many times I think and um that would have created a problem it would have been too thick I think this is okay now you just want to make sure it's flat I'm not really worried about these um which way these things go that's not going to really bother me i don't think if i say that and then it might later you just don't want wrinkles wrinkles will mess you up you want it flat and i'm only cutting let's see four of these I don't feel any wrinkles and on my my bottom row I'm going to put this line on here there's a line can you see the black lines that very top this line right here this line right here goes on the bottom of my fold on whatever side you're using that's going to go on the bottom of my fold. I'm going to come over because this isn't equaled up. i got to come over as short as this one right here. So I know I'm there. And I put the line on the bottom of the fold. And I make sure it's lined up with the fabric. And then I use my weight. And I put my weight on there. Then I'm going to start at zero and I hold it down and now I know I got a straight edge right there and then whatever my pattern calls for say if it's two and a half I do two and a half if it's one I do one and you just count over I usually put my thumb beside the one I'm going for so I don't lose my place. So this I know is just going to be scrap because it was made on that zero line to straighten it up. And there I have my, there I have my strips, my chassis strips. That quick and easy. Okay. Now we're going to turn around and go to my sewing chair. Okay, so now we're going to see, it says to subcut them and I didn't subcut them because I'm lazy and I'm trying to figure out a way to do this without subcutting them. And I think I'm going to just do it the old method the one on the side and one on the bottom. So basically you take your strip. It's according to your pattern. And this is the same on both sides. It feels like a woven fabric. So I'm going to just 
put it this way so I can see it better. And I'm gonna cheat. I don't feel like cutting these down and subcutting them, so I'm gonna cheat because that's what I do. I try to get it done as fast as possible. So I have my squares in a pile um, by rows and they're already sorted. So this is the top row first one. This is the second row first one. And that's what I'm going by. like scoot mine all the way up to the other one because I like to give myself room to cut in between them some people like to scoot them all the way up and it's just preference I just like to give myself a little space in between. all right so I've done the first rows I have them stacked in rows this is the first row second row third row hopefully they won't get out of order but they probably will and like this is just a little wall hanging so it will be okay so that's all that the first one is gonna give me so I'm gonna get another strip and start the second ones. And then I'm gonna take on, and I like to turn them this way when I'm cutting. I like to turn them this way when I'm cutting because I can just see better. And I line up the top, uh, I line up a line, that's a black line that's on the ruler or whatever color. And I put that on the top. And I do it upside down because to me, I can just see it better upside down. And one side is done. I gotta do is iron them open. And this was here, and this was here. And then this started my first row up here. Number one, number two, 
One, two, number three. Number four. Wait, one, two, three. And see, now I just do those together. Okay, that's that's fine. So all I'm gonna do now is add this right here. Just picking up the first two, because I've already added that, I'm gonna just put this right sides together and sew this down the side. You wanna iron it first? That's fine. Iron it first. I'm not going to. I'm going to take this one, flip it over, right sides together, and so this one. Right sides together and so this one. Okay. Now Make sure I have them back as they go. And I'll sew the last one on. Oh. Hi, little puppies. Come here. Come here. Come here. Puppies want me to play or get her a T R E A T. You can't see up for me. I want you. I want to see up for me. rows all I have to do is put my sashing in between so I'm gonna go ahead and iron all these we're gonna iron and there's our middle row super quick not really but we'll say it is top row and bottom row okay so now all my rows are done I put the sashing in between my rows except for this first one. So now I'm going to take a strip and I'm going to put it on this end. really matter if you do it on the end first or it if you wait and just do it all at the end I'm just going ahead and doing it
I got too much on that. I went and holding the ruler down right, but it'll be fine. Now, here is row one. Now all I have to do is put a sashing row on the top here. I'm going to put a sashing row here, 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 and here. And it's all going to be done. It'll be that. Then it'll be done. One, two, three. Yeah, I think I got enough. because now I got I want it to um, match up with my bottom rows. top row done and bordered. Now the th next thing I'm going to do is take the middle row and I want these blocks to kind of match up. So I'm putting them here but then I'm also feeling if they're gonna do feel like they're nesting so I'm gonna place a pin here I'm just filling with my fingers on down at the bottom where they would meet and seeing if they nest up. And they do, I'm just pulling it up to the top of that border and I'm pinning it. So it'll stay close to that same area. If that makes any sense. See, I'm filling right here to see if it's close like it would nest it would usually nest right here so i'm pushing it to where it would be nesting so don't look too far off and then i'm just pulling it up to the top and pinning it 
so you have these two that's like this but you can't tell if they nest until you get down here at the bottom so if they feel like they're nesting I'm moving them over there and then I'm just pulling it up to the top pulling it up to the top and I'm pinning it so it'll hopefully come out somewhat not too far off so this is the top but it don't start nesting until down here so I'm filling right here and it feels close so I'm just making sure it stays in that area and then I'm pinning at the top like so and we'll see if that helps any bits any at all And then if the borders are off, then I can just trim the borders. So that come out okay. They're not too far off. But I've got a really biased woven material here, so but that looks okay. Some of this is gonna have to be trimmed, but at least I'm trimming at the end and not in the middle. That's looking really cute. All right, so then I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to put on a border. done and last row and we're almost done and I'm gonna do the same thing all right and then I look to see if there's any gaps and it looks like there's some it looks bigger down here so I'm gonna put that on the bottom I hope it pulls up some they say it pulls up I don't necessarily know that it really does but they say it does. They say the feed dogs suck it in. Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. I think, I don't know if it depends on the fabric or what, but I don't know. I'm gonna hold that.
apparently skip this part. But I'm out of bobbin thread. Ooh, mercy sakes. Wait till the last minute. The very last minute. That's all right. This is what I keep my bobbins in. It's from the Dollar Tree. Cost a dollar. And also, these I put around my bobbins. I got those. Um, they're the, when you do your pedicure and you put those in between your toes. It also holds your bobbin string. So, especially this polyester one. Let's see, here's one. When I change my bobbin, I always do a, a test. And sometimes it decides it don't want to do right. So I always do a test when I change my bobbin. Okay. Let's try this again. She will be done. My cheater way of not measuring or sub cutting and I believe Miss Jenny Doan taught me this
Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, I did it, I made it, let's see. Mm, looks fairly equal. I like the green, so now all I have to do is put the backing on it and quilt it. And that's my quick way without sub cutting strips. I hate sub cutting strips. <laughs> I do it the lazy way, but that's okay. I like it. All right. Now all I need is done is quilting it. And thank you guys. Give us a like, thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up and a like. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a good night.